Hi everyone, I'm Andy McClellan. I'm, uh, I'm not sure what I describe myself as actually, kind of general dog's body and jack of all trades at the Pitt Rivers Museum, I suppose is my task. Um, I work with a lot of people who are significant experts. They know an awful lot about very small areas. On the whole, I tend to think that the job of an educator is to be a lot broader, that within a museum, we often have to be the people that say, yes, we're going to do that, even though we don't know how to do it. And I'm going to talk today about um, creating uh, digital art resources. I don't have a digital background and I'm not an art teacher. Um, so it's a kind of low level starting point, but I work with an amazing collection and there's a lot of stuff around me. I think what education officers often have to do is, you might think of it as stealing ideas, but it's actually about repurposing ideas. You take what's out there and you reuse it in a new way and you take that curatorial information and all the stuff that's created through collections and you change it and make it appropriate to the audience that the audiences we're working with because we are experts on engagement um, and uh, so we can we have the knowledge of how to change that to make it more suitable now the pit rivers has quite an unusual audience profile we're um, only 27 percent of our book groups are primary schools 67 percent are secondary fe or he and probably 50% of all our booked groups are GCSE art groups coming in, which is one of the reasons why we've been so keen to work with Miranda on the digital sketchbooks. Now, I said that this talk was going to be about doing websites on the cheap. I don't think you can do websites on the cheap, so I'm afraid that was a bit of a disingenuous um, <laughs> title. Um, what you can do, though, you can either make them... They're going to be expensive. They can either be expensive in money or they can be expensive in time. They don't actually have to be expensive in both of those things. And that's what I'm going to show you today, is how we've created some resources using almost no money apart from the wages that we get paid. So it's about time uh, rather than money. So one of the things we have, which um, uh, Miranda talked about, was physical sketchbooks, which we use with GCSE groups. So here's one of our sketchbooks. Um, oh, was it on the previous? I don't know. Let's go back. It was that one, wasn't it? Yeah. So you get to see it. it kind of, it's got annotation. It's got drawings. Uh, it, at one level, it's trying to encourage students in the museum uh, to draw in particular types of ways using different uh, media. It's also about infusing people, so they want to go out and do something. So uh, they, it's a kind of multi-purpose book. But it's a really good introduction to the museum. Um, if you're going to make cheap resources, you have to find ways of sourcing all of that art. Now, I think it's probably immoral to um, expect artists to give us work for free. So we have to find another way of sourcing it for free. Well, that might mean um, education officers making these web pages. Um, this is a, a, a sketchbook page from a previous art education officer who worked across uh, the museums. Um, same with this one. Um, this is uh, uh, our deputy front of house, who's a great artist who likes drawings, doing drawings for our sketchbooks. Um, this is an intern who worked with us uh, for six months. Um, and we have a lot of students from the Ruskin School of Art. So um, boys like to come in and draw guns. They do terrible, um, they do terrible drawings. So we asked a student who had no interest in guns to go out there and do some drawings of guns. She got masking tape out and did some amazing stuff. And it's really inspirational for those uh, kids about how they might approach those uh, collections. We've also worked with some artists who've chosen to give us stuff. Now, that's fine, talking to students and teachers in the museum. But what about before and after? So we were thinking about at the end of tail end of last year, how to get some of this stuff on the web, but we didn't have any money to do it. Um, so we used a template that already existed within our website that had been paid for through another project and really just kind of dropped our content into, into that framework. So there was some IT time, but not a lot of it. And these are the pages that we made. I did all of this through screen grab, so the resolution isn't very good. If you go onto the website, it's pretty clear, actually. Um, so the first thing we did, we we'd created a book for teachers a few years ago about how to draw in the museum. So we just basically put that online as PDFs. That was cheap and easy. It's about kind of um, how you might approach different ways of drawing in the museum. Um, we did stuff on annotation, which is really important in GCSE art. Um, taking photographs, which kids do and do terribly. So just, we just went out there with cameras, took some photos, trying to capture a bit of the essence of the Pitt Rivers Museum. Um, but the main thing we wanted to do was museum sketchbook images. How to get these sketchbooks, here's the, here's the guns from the Ruskin student, how to get this online. So, well, getting it online would be quite easy. You just go to something like Pinterest. But the problem with Pinterest um, is that 
uh, you don't have any information with it. And then we don't want just drawings, we want to know about what this stuff is. So we created a sort of Pinterest, here's, here's our page on masks. If you click on one of the images, you get a bigger image. And if you click on that, it'll take you to the objects database. And we have an online database of every single object in the Pit Rivers collection. It's not written for this particular audience, but it has good images on it, about, maybe on about 30% of the pages at the moment, I think. And it's got all the information we know about the objects, including the labels that are in the museum. So there is some accessible information in there as well. Um, this is the page on guns. So you can see the pictures of the guns, and then we've got pictures of the guns, what they look like on display in the museum. Again, you can click on the page, and then it'll take you to the, um, to the page in the uh, objects database. All of that is quite simple. It was quite a lot of work. You've got to go find within the database every single entry, write down the address, connect them all together. So there's a lot of quite boring work in there, but I could do a lot of that, and I had good support from our IT officer. But we only have one IT officer in the museum, so there's only a certain amount uh, you can ask him to do. Um, we also thought, right, if we're going to do this, let's get everything we can find that's related to ARC and get it all on the web pages together. So we also um, looked at interactive resources, which Miranda had some funding for. We had had a go at these uh, before and had made some a year or so earlier. And this is one of those projects that unfortunately basically failed because what we didn't know, because we were largely um, IT illiterate, was that if you use Flash, which was what we use for these interactive resources, they wouldn't work on tablets and they wouldn't work on phones. And there's not much point in having resources today that don't work in, the, in those kind of areas. So we created something that was a failure, but the success of it was that it led to Miranda uh, applying for innovation money to actually make it on a platform that works. So sometimes you just got to go through several phases uh, before you get there. But what these interactive resources do, whether they're these ones or Miranda's, is bringing together the stuff we've already got. So this is about um, a ben in, uh, contemporary Benin Bronze in the Pitt Rivers. Um, we put in podcasts on there, which were just coming from our, from our audio guide. We put in film, which came from an, um, an HLF project, which was working with local metal workers. Um, and we contacted artists. Um, if you don't ask, you don't get. So we contacted uh, Grayson Perry, who was quite happy to let us use his images, and Sakari Campbell Douglas, who allowed us to use her images. Um, we also checked on some bits of film and resources and other things, and uh, images of artists who've worked with museums. Great one, all about fake beards. I won't go into it now, but it's a quite interesting one, or lighting up the museum. What I want to go on to, though, is this, this pot. How long do I have, Martin? About half a minute. Okay, this is a camel intestine pot from the Punjab. Um, I decided to, I've got some training from Catherine who talked earlier on. I decided to have a go with um, Photoscan Pro. You can download it for 30 days free of charge. It's 500 quid otherwise. Um, and I had a go for 30 days, and I took photos. You can see they weren't great photos, just in our office. Um, and I even put it in a pencil pot to stand it upside down. I took 92 photos. I then spent about six hours um, uh, going through the software, but four of those hours of process. It was kind of agreement with my son. I spent 10 minutes um, uh, working on it, and then he'd spend half an hour playing Minecraft, and then we'd swap over again. <laughs> and by the end of the evening, um, I, well, I don't want to go to the trash, I want to go to that. By the end of the evening, I had this, which if I can, hold on a sec. You're going to let me out? Oh, yeah. Which is the 3D image of whoop, 3D image of this pot, which for some reason doesn't want me to, which you can turn over in all sorts of directions. For some reason, it's just got a strange colour. But uh, but you can see just how wonderful how wonderful that is. You can see a lot of detail. It's a kind of um, camel intestine papier mâché. Instead of using paper, use camel intestine. But I think the detail on that. I don't know why it's gone red. I clicked on it in the wrong way. Oh, there we go. You can see quite a lot of detail in there. And, and considering I'd never used it before, and it was a Friday evening, I did have a glass of wine in my hand while I was doing it, and other things kind of going on, I think it was a pretty successful go. Now, I would like to now use this. The, oh, by the way, what I'm showing you is a PDF that's small enough to be emailed. It's four megabytes, and I'm showing it to you in Acrobat Reader, which is free software that most of you have on your computers. This can be embedded into anything. I want to make one of those interactive resources that Miranda was talking about, or one of us to make, using something like this so you can look at an object all around. I think there's a lot of future in stuff like this. Thank you.